Commander Legends Collector Booster Boxes. $258.88 shipped. You're trying to figure out, is it worth it? Do you want to buy it? We've seen Mana Drain. We've seen Jeweled Lotus. We have a really good idea of the power level of the cards in here with Vampiric Tutor. It's important to note, there's certain cards that are in this product that are not in the regular boosters. I'm going to give you my opinion, it's just an opinion, on whether or not it's worth it to buy this product. And the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fan fight series. Link in the description below. For a limited time only, if you join the Patreon at any level, you will receive a holographic Jake and Joel R. Magic logo sticker. Link in the description below. It's that time. We're reviewing another Collector Booster product. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel R. Magic. Today we're talking about Commander Legends Collector Booster Boxes, Collector Booster Packs, Collector Boosters in general. I went over with myself how I wanted to do this video and I've thought about it a lot. I decided the best way to present this information would be to note the major differences between this product and other Collector Booster Boxes. Really quickly, we'll go back and I want to talk about how the first time we saw Collector Booster Boxes was in Throne of Eldraine. We had just seen borderless cards appear in Ultimate Masters, the extended art cards that we saw that treatment on Liliana and Noble Hierarch, Kozlik, among other many other cards in Ultimate Masters, Snapcaster Mage, just to name a few. So when we saw extended art cards appear in Throne of Eldraine collector boosters, it was a very big surprise. This was a big deal for the community. Throne of Eldraine even had a deluxe edition that came out alongside the collector booster product, a product that would later be abandoned by Wizards of the Coast as it was very unpopular, catered only to whales, and was generally not well received. Since Throne of Eldraine, every set that has come out has had a collector booster product. Among other things like Secret Layer, we have so many new variants that it's really hard to sort it all out. Today we're going to talk about the main differences between previous Collector Booster products and Commander Legends Collector Booster boxes. There are special cards in this product that you can only get in the Collector Booster product, which is part of the appeal. We're going to talk all about that. If you like these product reviews, I encourage you to click like and click subscribe. It's the best way to support the channel with just the click of a button. In 2020, Joel and I made it a goal to hit 10,000 subs. If you've been putting off subscribing, there is no time like now. Let's go ahead and get into this video as there is a lot to go over. One thing I want to mention is that everything that I have in this video I will put in the description. So if there is an online article or anything like that, a Reddit post, I will make sure you have all of that information so that you can read these articles yourself. So rather than read through this entire article, let's just talk about a few things. We're not mainly going to go over spoilers in this video, as that is all information that you can find in spoilers. You do need to know that the buy a box is a mana confluence, and this card will not appear in the main set. It is going to be your responsibility to reach out to local game stores that you purchase the boxes from to see what their allocation is like to make sure that you're going to get this card. I would follow up as well if you've done any pre-orders online, any collector booster boxes if you've already bought them. I would reach out to those sellers and just see if they'll be including the Mana Confluence. If it wasn't in the original listing that you bought, it likely isn't going to be there, but some people might be fulfilling these orders. Additionally, during pre-release week, four Commander Legends stores will have an alternate art version of Singer their Dark Baron. This features art done by Pete Venters, the original artist of Baron Singer. Additionally, etched foils. If you get an etched foil, it will always be foil, and these cards don't exclusively appear in collector booster boxes, but they also appear in the regular draft booster boxes. Extended art cards, like many collector booster boxes, will also be in this product. We're going to talk more about those. This card, Command Tower, you may be saying, wow, I can't believe they printed this in this set. However, it is important to note that Command Tower will not actually be in the base set. This is the kind of information you need to know, and we're going to continue talking about this. Here are the collector booster contents. Now, before we get into this, I want to note my previous videos, and I'm going to link one of them now. This is when Theros Beyond Death collector boosters came out. I compared them to Throne of Eldraine collector boosters 
boosters. And it's really like the first time that as a collector, I saw, oh, wow, this is actually the way every set is going to be. Remember, as I was talking about in the beginning of the video, Ultimate Masters had these extended art cards. We had seen them on MTG Arena, but now it was like the first time that we're starting to see these uh, extended art cards start to appear on powerful cards like Liliana of the Veil and Snapcaster Mage. So when they brought this extended art treatment to Throne of Eldraine, it was really an eye opener. The whole community, if you're if you're new, the whole community during this time just kind of like opened their eyes and was like, oh, OK. So these cards aren't exactly super special. They're going to start doing this with all standard sets. And since then, that has been the trend with Throne of Eldraine, Theros Beyond Death, Ikoria, Core 2021, Zendikar Rising, and now Commander Legends Collector Boosters. I'm going to link a playlist. It's the Is It Worth It playlist if you want to look more deeply into those. I diligently compare variants of the time to other variants. And I show you that a lot of these variants are going to drop in price. And extended art cards, it really comes down to when everything is special, nothing is special. So something about this product must be special if there's so much hype, let's get into that. Like other collector booster products, you're gonna get five foil commons. These are going to be foil commons from the main set of Commander Legends. Remember, and I want you to read this article because the verbiage is very important in all of this. There's a reason why these breakdowns are so extensive. It's just a confusing product. If you've never opened it, it's really hard to understand what you're gonna open. There's a lot of flashy goodies in there. So some of the packs are going to be as much as, you know, $20 if it's like a, a, a Theros Beyond Death Collector Booster pack. And some of the packs are as high as $25 to $30, depending on the desirability of the cards within them. So let's talk really fast. I'm going to go through all of this. Two foil uncommon rare and or mythic rare legendary cards. These are normal frame foil versions of legendary creatures and planeswalkers in the set. The five possible combinations you can open here are two uncommons, an uncommon and a rare, two rares, a mythic rare and an uncommon and a rare and a mythic rare. So you can see how that could be a little confusing to somebody who is not familiar with this product. You could also get one foil rare or mythic rare non-legendary card. It sometimes has extended art. This could be any rare or mythic rare in the main set, which is not a legendary creature or planeswalker. This card is foil. Additionally, about 30% of the time, this upgrades to a foil extended art card. One extended art common or uncommon card, non-legendary. This is one of the 33 commons and uncommons given this treatment in non-foil. These cards were selected from cards which appeared in either the main set or the Commander Legends com Commander decks. The commons and uncommons appear at an equal rate. You can find a list of these cards once they've been revealed here. They have been revealed, and this is what you really need to know. And let's go ahead and take a look at this list. You're going to see all of these cards, and some of them are actually in the set, and others of them are not. The way that you could tell is by the number on the card. Anything over 361 is in the pre-cons. But then there's also a caveat to that as some of the cards that do appear in the set, if they are a variant or something like that, will have a higher number as well. So again, very confusing. The best way to describe it is like this. Everything that has an extended art frame is going to have a number that's above 361. 361 is the number of cards in the base set of Commander Legends. So if if you look here and you see something like this, this is going to be confusing to you. You're going to see this counter spell and you're going to go, wow, they printed counter spell into Commander Legends. Well, no, they actually did not print counter spell into Commander Legends, but you can see by this border because this is the normal border and that number here is 395. It's above 361. That's going to tell you that this counter spell does not appear in Commander Legends, but instead appears in one of the precons. So make sure when you're looking at those numbers, I told you anything above 361 is in the precon. Well, not necessarily. Every single card that has an extended art frame, whether it's in the regular base set or the precons that will be released alongside the base set, all of those cards are going to have a number above 361. So if you see a card that's notable, like Counterspell, or uh, you see Factor Fiction here, or Mold Drifter, or here's Preordain, this is the extended art, or cards like Soul Ring, you need to know that Soul ring is not in the base set. The only spot that you can get a soul ring is going to be in the precon. And more importantly, the only spot that you're going to get a foil extended art soul ring is in Commander Legends Collector Boosters. So that might be enough for you to understand the basics of this. 
So now we're back here. I've just showed you that. We've gone over that list here. You can also get one extended art rare or mythic rare. We're, we're talking again about the Commander Legends Collector Booster Pack contents, non-legendary. This could be any non-legendary rare or mythic rare from Commander Legends main set. That's an important thing to read when you go through this article, main set. Make sure to look at all of these adjectives. So this section is important. It's what we were just talking about with uh, card popular cards like Preordain and Soul Ring. Two foil uncommons, non-legendary. Sometimes this is a common or uncommon with extended art. These are two foil uncommons from the set in a normal frame that aren't legendary. Each of these slots has a chance to be turned into a foil extended art card about 20% of the time. When that happens, it can either be a common or uncommon extended art. Then we're getting into the etched cards that we were talking about, this new border that Wizards of the Coast has created for these cards. We saw that on Prosh earlier in the video. One foil etched uncommon legendary creature. This has one legendary uncommon foil etched card, which can be any uncommon legendary creature in the main set. You can see a video of the treatment above. This can also be Prismatic Piper, which is Rarity S. It also has one foil etched reprint legendary creature, which we have seen like Prosh and Nekosar and cards like those, we've selected 32 reprint legends not otherwise in the set to receive the foil etched treatment. You can find the list of these reprint legends once they've been revealed here. Regardless of if their original rarity was rare or mythic rare, they all appear as mythic rares. You will find one of these, such as Prosh featured above, in every Commander Legends Collector Booster. Keep that in mind. These etched cards are going to be in every single Collector Booster, and following up with that, there will be two of them. So it kind of reminds me of like Theros Beyond Death, how you would sometimes get two of the showcase uh, constellation demigods, and then sometimes you would get a demigod with a god, like you would get Caliphae and then Thassa, but sometimes you would just get double Caliphae. Then we have one foil etched rare, mythic rare, legendary creature, or foil borderless planeswalker. This is your slot for an awesome version of a foil legendary card. You will open a foil etched rare, or mythic rare legendary creature here because the planeswalkers don't appear in the foil etched treatment, the borderless versions of one of the two possible planeswalkers. Pretty big deal, this is your big slot here, you can get some big stuff, but let's talk about where everything is because I think this visual breakdown is always very helpful. The borderless planeswalkers appear in draft boosters and collector boosters. In both spots, they might be foil. The etched legends, foil etched legends, keep in mind, they are always foil. Two times guaranteed in collector boosters, they're always foil. They do appear in regular draft boosters. Most likely it is going to be much more rare to find them, but the fact that they exist there is important. So what is the biggest difference between Commander Legends Collector Booster Packs and regular Commander Legends Booster Packs? It's extended art cards. They simply are not included in draft boosters. They are included in collector boosters and have a chance of upshifting to foil. So if you want that extended art foil jeweled lotus, the extended art foil mana drain, the extended art foil soul ring, the extended art foil command tower, the possibility of getting these commander staples and having them upshifted to not only extended frame, but then extended art foil. It really comes down to how much does that mean to you? We're looking here at Card Kingdom and we're looking at Throne of Eldrain variants. And every single one of these sets is going to have standout variant cards. Cards that, if they are upshifted to foil, have a huge premium. Looking at Great Henge, uh, Embercleave Extended Art Foil, Oko Thief of Crowns. Oko, even though it has been banned in almost everything, this card has very powerful commander use. It's played in Legacy, it's played in Vintage. It, even though it's been banned in everything, the card is highly desirable. However, even though there are going to be outliers and really good cards that you can pull in this extended art frame, the amount that are lackluster compared to the standouts it's a pretty immense amount. And remember, the packs that you're buying that potentially hold these cards are anywhere from $20 to $30 packs. Right now, we're looking at foil variants that are cheap. Let's get past all of the commons and uncommons. So this is going to show you right here, these are all like 25 cents, that all of these variants, it doesn't really matter what they print. It matters 
how many of the cards exist in circulation and after a certain period of time i mean this is this is one of the foil extended art cards that you could get out of one of these packs so you buy a 25 dollars pack you're like oh my gosh you know i could pull foil great henge sure you could or you could pull foil oath sworn knight and it's extended art. It's supposed to be super expensive, right? Well, no, not necessarily. It comes back to this perpetuating idea that when everything is special, nothing is special. And so right here, you're seeing all of these uh, extended art cards that are $2, $3, $3. $4. When you're opening an extended art card, you have to hope that you get the right one because I'm showing you all of them that are lackluster. And most of these cards are going to be a little bit more expensive on Card Kingdom. You'd be able to find a lot of these for cheaper on eBay, but I'm showing you here because they're all grouped together. You can just see in mass how many of them are not worth the price of the pack. Now, granted, there are other cards in the pack outside of this foil extended art card, but a lot of those cards when you're opening, you know, five foil commons, two foil uncommons, regular extended art card, which if it isn't foil has the potential to be, let's get to one, just very cheap. You know, a 49 cent Sundering Stroke, that's an extended art card. Stolen by the Fae, which is Vengeance. All cards that, you know, this card had some hype when it first came out. And now look, it's a 69 cent extended art card. This set at this point is so far out of mind. If you're not pulling Great Henge or Oko or Fabled Passage or Brazen and borrower you know you can just acquire all these i mean fey of wishes did big things in standard the card is absolutely great and the showcase version is 79 cents theros beyond death variants as well it's going to have the same kind of thing there's going to be outliers like uro and croxa that are going to hold a premium nyx bloom ancient dryad shadow spear but even after that, when you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I'm paying $20 and these are some of like the top end stuff that I could pull out of these packs, you have to wonder if it's really worth it. Like Throne of Eldrain, tons of variants that are cheap, extended art cards, showcase cards that are all cheap. Um, you could take the $250 and just cherry pick a bunch of extended art cards if that's what you're really interested in. Ikoria variants, a different thing going on here. We've got uh, all of our variants sorted by price high to low right now. And you could see even Ghidorah and the Broodmoth, $44, $39. Now granted, if, these are, if you get these in foil, they're gonna have a much higher premium. But even then, you can just see if you pull the nuts, it's still just a $60 foil extended card. And and I'm not saying $60 isn't a lot of money, but if you're paying $25 to $30 for a pack, you're really hoping to get a big return. Now, Ikoria is notable because it's home to the Triomes, and this is one of the big things that I look at when I'm buying a Collector Booster product, and we're going to talk about it really quick in, in Commander Legends, but I always like to look at the land cycle. The land cycle helps to inform me as like, if I am hitting a land or if I'm hitting a foil land, is it going to be something exciting like a Triome that I can search up? All of these are tutorable using fetch lands or is it going to be something like a, a scry land that came out of theros beyond death or core 2021 which a hundred percent affects the prices of those products on the secondary market so i could go through every single set and all of these are going to be pretty much the same thing there's going to be cards at the top that are expensive and like any other magic the gathering set there are going to be cards that are inexpensive very cheap that you can acquire easily just because something is showcased just because something is extended art doesn't make it this new big special thing so we're, we were just talking about that land cycle battle bond brought us the essentially pseudo dual lands they enter untapped as long as you have uh two or more opponents these lands are notable because they are not tutorable they are non-basic lands but they are very cool because in commander they have no downside as long as you have two or more opponents they enter the battlefield untapped so while you can search this land up with something like an expedition map you're sadly not going to be able to search it up with something Thing like a fetch land like the triomes in Ikoria. However, these lands are very useful. They were very, very popular in Battle Bond, ended up being one of the chase cards to pull from those sets. And before those cards were reprinted in Zendikar as expeditions, they were starting to hold a pretty big premium. Those were the chase cards of Battle Bond. Wizards of the Coast completing this cycle of Battle Bond lands here in Commander Legends. As far as uh, Commander playability goes, eternal desirability of these cards, Commander is the lifeblood of Magic the Gathering. It's far and away the most important format. We recently did a poll in our community where we asked our followers and subscribers, what format do you play the most? And overwhelmingly, 79% of the people who voted out of 1,100 votes said Commander. 
So when I say Commander is the lifeblood and we were just talking about the lands, it's just important to note that these lands are desirable in Commander. The Scry lands have been printed into Oblivion, there's nothing that's special about them, nothing that's saucy about them. The Triomes from Ikoria are far and away my favorite land cycle that's come out of one of these Collector Booster products. Zendikar Rising was really smart and brought back Expedition lands. But like this product, those expeditions and those fetch lands, they did not appear in regular draft booster packs. So the big appeal here, like we were just talking about, are these extended art cards. The land cycle is nice. I would give the land cycle a B plus or an A minus. We're going to see powerful cards like Command Tower. However, like I said earlier in the video, make sure you look at that number. That number on that Command Tower is 479 in this normal frame. That tells you that this card is not in the base set. If it has a normal frame, one more time, just to be explicitly clear, if the card that you're looking at has a normal frame and has a number, that is above 361. That means that that card is only going to appear in one of the commander precons. It's only going to appear in this border. The only place you can find this foil extended art command tower is going to be in collector booster boxes. That product, that product only. Let's briefly talk about a couple of the top end cards that are in this set. It would be silly to not talk about those. We can see right here on Card Kingdom, and these are out of stock, which means that Card Kingdom hasn't even put these up to be bought yet, but these are just their current prices. We see Jeweled Lotus, hugely talked about card. I'll link a video. Joel and I have an extensive discussion about it. He has a video where he explores turn and one wins with the card in Commander. We have Mana Drain. We have Scroll Rack, Staff of Domination, Vampiric Tutor, Rings, Opposition Agent. Now, if we move away from Variants and we go Commander Legends, just straight up, price high to low, you get an idea of what cards are just in the base set. So make sure you're familiar with what cards are in the base set and which cards are not. It's the biggest thing that you need to do before you purchase this product. But we see a lot of big important cards. Command Beacon is actually in the base set. So that's a card that you can plan on seeing. Staff of Domination. Commander's Plate. This is a big card. I like the card. It's a brand new card. New uh, Sakashima. But just go through here. Familiarize yourself with this. I'm not going to go through all of these. There's a lot of FOMO around the Jeweled Lotus, and I want you to resist it. Jeweled Lotus will be appearing in this main set, so if you're just looking for a regular card, expect to find it. So don't overpay for Jeweled Lotus. You can see people have already done it. $500, $999, $799. This is just people blowing their load. One was accepted for $1,200. I talked about this in a previous video. I'm just telling you, even though this is a Black Lotus, and I get it, it is a Black Lotus for your commander. Remember that. It is specifically for your commander. It is not going to do anything else, anywhere else. It will ramp your commander out, and you will win some silly games on turn one or two, but the card gets significantly worse later on in the game. This product is not even in hand yet, so expect this card to go down from price even from where it is. We'll go ahead and put these in list view here. We'll go price to shipping lowest first, and you can already see Jeweled Lotus $150 for the foil. The price has already started to take a big dip, and you can see people are undercutting each other. Let's see if this looks like a, a reputable seller here. Yeah, 100% feedback on 60 transactions. They have four available. This looks like a seller that's trying to get out ahead, sell these for cheaper before the market starts getting flooded with them, and you have people that are acquiring one because that's all you need, and then they're getting rid of their extras. There will be Jeweled Lotuses opened, regular foil mythics that are opened in collector boosters, as well as people that open extended art frames. A lot of people, when they're opening an expensive product like one of these, are trying to acquire one or two cards that they really want for their collection, and then they're selling back the rest so that they can have acquired a Jeweled Lotus for a very cheap price. It takes a little bit of time to sell off the cards that you don't want, but if you sell into hype, you're going to be able to get one of these cards for a very cheap price. So we've talked about the biggest differences, which are the land cycles between these products. I've noted the fact that a lot of the time extended art cards and showcase cards aren't going to hold a premium just because they're blinging and flashy. One more time, I want to reiterate, these are the cards that are in the Commander Legends pre-cons. I'm going to link this article from MTG Goldfish. The cards that appear in here like Factor Fiction, Soul Ring, Command Tower, all of these cards appear in these precons, but will be upshifted to extended art and possibly extended art foil in the Commander Legends Collector Boosters. I think that is the most concise and most important thing that I can tell you is if you're looking for these extended art foil variants, you will only find them in the Commander Legends Collector Booster Packs. And so the question is, is it worth it? $258.88. 
if you were to pre-order this after tax, it's going to be about 270, 280 bucks shipped. It depends on you. It depends on what you think of all these variants. For me, I want to acquire the Jeweled Lotus, but this product for me is the kind of thing where I just see, I see where it's gone with uh, the Mythic Edition. I have see I see where it's gone ever since Battle for Zendikar and Kaladesh and Amonkhet and the first time they put golden tickets into regular booster boxes. I see where it's gone with Mythic Edition, all of the Mythic Edition debacles. And then after the Mythic Edition debacle, they gave out the first time we saw box toppers from Ultimate Masters, and it built a bunch of hype for Ultimate Masters. After Ultimate Masters, and the first time we saw foil extended art cards, they decided to make extended art cards a regular practice for all standard sets and Magic the Gathering sets moving forward. We've also seen Secret Layer come out since then, and at this point, it appears there is no limit to the amount of product that Wizards of the Coast will print. It also used to be a thing that if Wizards of the Coast wanted to reprint a card, like Thoughtseize, for example, needed a reprint for a long time, it appeared in Theros, and the reprint would have a function or would fit thematically with the set. Wizards of the Coast has shown us first with Masters products, but now with set boosters and things like the list, and products like mystery boosters, that any card can be reprinted at any time for any reason. So is it worth it for me, for about $270 after ship, to buy a Commander Legends Collector Booster box? It really depends on how much you value those variants. How much do you think the foil command tower extended art is going to be? How much do you think the foil extended art soul ring is going to be? And you think about these cards before you even think about the big heavy hitters from the set that are printed in the main set, foil jeweled lotus, foil mana drain, important cards like these. There's a lot of staples in this set, but unlike Zendikar Rising Collector Boosters, there are no expeditions or eternal fetch lands that appear in it, but I think that's okay. I don't think every single product needs to have fetch lands. I'll be completely transparent, I bought two of these boxes because there are a lot of commander staples that I'm excited about. However, if you do decide to take that bankroll and buy singles and you wait long enough, I bet you can stretch $270 a long way as far as acquiring singles from this product. So it really comes down to you. Is it worth it for the hype of being able to open the product and maybe open a really, really amazing collector booster box that not only gets a jeweled lotus, but maybe hits a foil mana drain as well, among other cards? It's all gambling. I'm not going to tell you it isn't. If anything, I hope you understand the product better. If you're new, thanks for hanging out. If you're already a subscriber on the channel, thanks for coming back again to hear me harp on the same stuff. I am excited about Commander Legends. Like I said, I bought two of these boxes. I plan to open one, I plan to save one. But outside of that, I probably won't be buying a lot of stray packs. The best way to buy one of these products is to just buy the box. It's going to guarantee that you get the best spread and the best variants as far as being able to open well. You might get lucky at the LGS if you buy a single pack, but you might also swing and miss. I know what it's like to open a collector booster pack and get like $5 in cards, and I'm sure many of you do too. If you do purchase this product, don't purchase it for much more than it already is. I promise you. In the future, there will be a Jeweled Lotus secret layer. If the card does well, all they have to do is print it by itself and sell it in a $50 secret layer and people will buy tons and tons and tons of them. Mark my words. Until next time, I'm Jake with Jake and Jeweler Magic. I'm tapped out.